there, my name is Will and welcome along to another drum lesson where today I'm going to be teaching and breaking down how to play the legendary intro to the song Song 2 by Blur, originally played by Dave Roundtree on drums. This is an awesome song to learn if you are a beginner on the drums because not only are you going to be learning how to play an iconic drum part but you're also going to learn how two bar phrases work and at the end of this lesson, I'm going to be revealing a secret about how Blur actually recorded this drum part and how you can use the idea to challenge yourself further on the drums. So let's get into this one and break down what will forever be the intro to FIFA 98 on the PlayStation 1. So to begin learning how to play this drum intro, one of the first things you need to do is to understand how a two bar phrase works. If you're new to the drums, you probably find so far that most of the drum beats that you've been playing are one bar phrases. This means that the pattern that you play whilst you're playing a drum beat is restarting or resolving every four beats or one bar. With a two bar phrase, this pattern, also known as a phrase, restarts or resolves after eight beats, which is two bars long. Now this is a great tool that you can use when writing drum parts for songs because it allows you more time to make the drum beat sound more interesting. But it's not so complicated that the average listener can't keep up with what's going on. It allows time for syncopation and that means you can make your drum beats sound more catchy. And you hear examples of this in loads of different stuff from anything from Taylor Swift, Shake It Off, Sunday Bloody Sunday by U2, Blink-182, First Date, or in this case, Song 2 by Blur. A lot of twos in there, actually, and it's a two bar phrase. <gasps> it's really important you get that concept of how a two bar phrase works, because then it's way easier to then break down the phrase as we're about to do in our next step. So we have two bars of drum beat to learn and we're going to begin by looking at that initial first bar. Now the whole beat is counted in eighth notes. That's one and two and three and four and. And to begin with, your right hand is going to play that all on the hi-hat. The snare drums are going to land on two and four initially and we're going to have bass drums landing on beats one, three and the and of three. Now you need to change what happens at the end of this phrase. We're going to move the last hit of the hi-hat, which is on the and of four, from the hi-hat to the rack tom. So the last hit of the bar is going to be landing on the high tom rather than the hi-hat. Now if you are playing two bar phrases for the first time, I suggest the next thing to do is to practice playing that and then following it up with a bar of eighth notes, just the hi-hat and snare. This just allows you to get used to the idea of not looping the same one bar over and over again, and there being a different idea in your second bar. Practice that as a loop to get used to that two bar phrase, and then we can go about learning that second bar. Now we're going to need to remember the first bar, so don't forget it, we'll pop it on the shelf and be back for that in just a moment. But with the second bar, we've got a few more bass drums and an additional left hand to add in. If we just look at the bass drums to begin with, we're going to have a bass drum landing on one, the and of one, the and of two, and the and of three. So there's quite a lot going on. So nice and slowly, you're going to have bass, bass, snare, bass, and, bass, snare, and. We're also then going to add in an additional snare drum, and this is going to happen right at the end of the bar on the and of four. So we're effectively going to have snare snare for the last two hits of the bar. But we're not stopping there because for the very last hit of the bar, I actually need you to move your right hand over to the floor tom. So the last two hits of the bar are 
high hand snare drum together, and then both hands, floor tom and snare drum together. So it's four and. Now there is quite a lot going on there, so practice it slowly, but once you've got it down, it's time to see if we can put the first bar with the second bar. In theory, the next step is pretty straightforward. You've got to play through that first bar we learned and then follow up with the second bar. The only problem is, is that drums are played in reality and not in theory. I suggest when you're playing this to start off really slow to allow your brain that time to process each of the different patterns you have to remember. If you still find that you're kind of playing through that first bar and then completely forgetting what happens in the second bar, what I would suggest to do is practice it through, play it once, leave a gap, and then move on to the second bar. Leaving a gap to begin with just to allow your mind to get accustomed to playing two different patterns is a great way to practice this groove. Then you'll probably find it's easier to make that gap smaller and smaller, and before you know it, you'll be able to play both bars on loop over and over again, and you are gonna wanna loop this bad boy a lot of times, because the more you loop it, the faster you're able to play it, and you'll be able to get up to the speed of the song. Once you're up to speed, you've got a decision to make, and that's whether you're gonna play your right hand on the hi-hat, or whether you want to play the drum beat with your right hand on one of the hoops of the other drums. Now when Blur play this song live, I'm fairly sure that Dave Ramtree plays one of the rack toms with his right hand, but it's totally personal preference as to what you do, whether you go with the hats or the hoops, but maybe you could do both, as we find out the secret of how Blur actually recorded this drum intro in step number five. So, fun fact time, and as I said at the beginning of this lesson, there's actually an interesting secret story as to how this drum beat was recorded. Because the reason you have this debate over whether you should play it on the hi-hat or the hoop of the drum is actually because you're not hearing one drummer play that drum beat, you're hearing two. <laughs> that is because not only can you hear the drummer Dave Roundtree playing drums, but you can also hear the guitarist of Blur, Graham Coxon, playing drums as well. The producer, Stephen Street, he decided he wanted to create this lo-fi feel to the beginning of the song. So basically what he did is he got the two of them to jam for several minutes in the studio and he recorded it all to tape and then it went back through and chose his favourite two bars which he then looped over and over again and they recorded the rest of the song on top of that. So this iconic Blur drum beat is actually just a two bar loop. But I love the idea of creating the sound of two drummers playing at the same time and I want to challenge you to see if you can do that now. So we're going to take the drum beat we've learned today and we're going to see if we can play all of it on our right hand. So we're going to forget about any time we hit the drums at the same time with both hands, we're going to take that out of it we're gonna put our right hand on the drum hoop and play through both bars, including the tom hits. It's gonna give us something like this. Now because the whole drum beat's played in eighth notes, that hopefully shouldn't be too difficult if you can play everything so far. Then over the top of that, we're then gonna put the left hand playing all of the eighth notes on every single hit on the hi-hat. But then to finish it off, I still want to get that double snare in there. So see if you can move your left hand right at the end of the second bar down to the snare drum whilst your right hand is sitting the floor tom. So you're going to have this movement from hi-hat and snare to snare and floor tom. And you can speed things up to the tempo of the song and hopefully you've got something that sounds a lot like the intro to song two. All 
I hope from watching this video you've got a better idea of how to play the drum intro to Song 2 by Blur and hopefully you gave that last challenge a good go as well. Let me know in the comments how you're getting on with the beat and what you prefer. Do you prefer playing in the hi-hat, the side of the drum or can you do both in that final challenge? And if you enjoyed this lesson why not go ahead and press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this one. Until next time, my name is Will and I will see you again soon.